So, you learned that to have a good health and to prevent a disease, you learned the eight remedies, right? But let's say that you are really sick and doing the eight laws of health, it will help you in the long term, but you need something right now. And instead of going to a clinic, you will start to do the treatment yourself. What can you do? You will start with prayer, sunlight, rest, water, eating healthy. You will add more fruits, more vegetables. Um, somebody asked me, um, what about prescription medicine? If I take a lot of prescription medicine, when you start adding the fruits and vegetables, you need to start, if it's your problem, it's high blood pressure, you need to check before you take the medicine. Because really fast, 10 days, 15 days, your body will start to react to the extra fruits and vegetables. And your blood pressure will not be as high anymore. It will start to drop. So you need to go back to your doctor and say, for this whole week, my blood pressure has been this, and I take the medicine and it goes lower. And can be too low? It can, but we don't want it too low, right? So your doctor will start to give you a lower dose. If it's diabetes and you will start eating more vegetables, what will happen? your blood sugar will start to go down. So before you take the amount of uh, insulin that you were used to, you need to check. And with 10 days, 15 days, what will happen? You have to take less and less. And at no time, you are free from medicines. It's reversible, a lot of things are reversible. Some things um, are not, especially what it's uh, inherited or we were born that way. But God always provides a relief. You can follow the eight remedies that he will give you a relief. And remember, we are not in heaven yet. We will get sick. We will not get sick like other people get sick, people that never took care of their body. We will get sick. We will have runny nose. We might even have cancer. I had a friend. She was perfect with the health law. Amazing. I was so angry when she was diagnosed with cancer. I said, Lord, how could you do that? What good will be for your name to have my friend sick? And uh, she passed. And I was really sad. I said, God, I don't think I believe in this anymore. And um, I was talking to another person that were friends with her too. And the person started laughing and said, don't be silly. And I said, I don't want to hear all that stuff that you want to tell me. You know, you're going to tell that God's will is better. He knows what he's doing. Uh, my friend just died and she was perfect. And uh, he, he said, you really didn't know her story before, did you? And I said, no, I didn't know. I didn't know. First of all, I thought she was about 45. She was not 45. She was 76. <laughs> yep. Her whole family passed away. She was, she grew up without a mother because of that type of cancer. Her mother died early 40s. All her sisters passed away. All her aunts. She's alone. She just have her husband and her kids. Everybody else is gone. 
God gave her so many more years. Isn't that amazing? Because she obeyed. She taught the health message. She had her own TV show in Richmond. That's how influential she was. And God extended her life that she could praise, live to praise his name for so long. And here I was judging. It's my job judge people. It's my job judge God. <laughs> my job is look at him. <laughs> and when we start doing God's way of healing, we might not be the way we expect to be, but it will be a lot better than everybody else is suffering. When God starts this transformation in you, remember how many years before you passed your life doing everything wrong. And then day one we start our change. We want everything to be different and transformed. <laughs> it's disappointing, right? 40 years of eating wrong and we want one day of natural treatment to work. <laughs> it's going to work, but it's slowly. And your faith will have a big impact there too. Like, remember um, the, the soldier, uh, no, the commander that was asked to wash in the river in, in Israel? Jordan, Naaman. So he looked and he said, that dirty river? You know, do I have to put clay in my belly? It's dirty. Charcoal? I want a, my river here that it's clean. <laughs> but he obeyed. The people that were around him were like, we are here, just do it. <laughs> it took seven times. So it takes some work. Your, your faith will be tested. But as long as you are looking at where you are supposed to look at Jesus and focus on that, everything else will come easy. Next one. You're feeling sick. You know there are three keys for a good health. Circulation, oxygenation, and alkalinization. Right? You're feeling sick. Stop eating. The only thing you can eat, fruits and vegetables and water. That's it. When the little kids are sick, the first thing they stop doing it's food. You try to give them oatmeal or soup, they go, mmm. But you offer them an orange, they will eat it. Why? This is easy to digest. When we eat things that are easy for our body to digest, has a lot of fiber, a lot of nutrients, your body doesn't have to waste energy adapting that food to fit your body. It doesn't have to waste energy, precious energy that it's for healing. It doesn't have to waste. It will be guided to where you need that energy. Instead of spending six hours processing um, all meats, all proteins, they take six hours plus to digest. And when we eat fruit, one hour, two hours. If we mix the fruits, three hours. If it has nuts, three hours and a half. It's easy. It's fast. It digests really fast. 
and it has so many nutrients that your body instantly start to pulling, start pulling from your mouth. So you say, but what with that people that do juicing? It's like really big right now, Gerson therapy, the juices. Uh, what's with that? Doesn't have fiber. Huh. Everything is in a juicer. The person when is sick, very sick, it's because the body is depleted of nutrients. It's zero nutrients. Every time the person is hungry, it will eat carbohydrates because it's easy and tasty, cookies, crackers, pizza, sandwich. So all that has no nutrients and your body every two hours, we ask you for food that has nutrients, not empty, just empty calorie. Now, can you understand what it means empty calorie? It's just a food that is adding to your body everything that is bad adds cholesterol to destroy your arteries and veins and your heart, adds sugar to destroy all your organs. But when you eat the fruits and vegetables with the fiber, they digest fast. When you take the fiber, you do the juicing, it's even faster. While you are using the juice to salivate, Remember, we have to salivate to put in our stomach. Your mouth cells start to pull the nutrients. And a cancer patient or a patient that has an autoimmune disease has no nutrients in the body. When they start juicing, their body doesn't waste time in digestion. It will grab the nutrients and fast, but where it's needed. So the energy is saved. So your body can really focus on the healing. Our body is so amazing the way it works. And um, our grandparents really understood that because there were no doctors nearby, no pharmacies to buy stuff. Mm -mm, they had to do everything. Fever, my grandmother would put me in cold water and she would not stop the fever. But cold water would help my body to fight alone. And the infection wouldn't, pro, uh, wouldn't prevail. Now, when we stop the fever, the infection comes because we stop the fever. The fever our body uses to kill the invader. So we just give tools to our body to do the healing. So you are sick, stop eating fruits and vegetables. If you have diabetes, start with lots of vegetables first. And once you start noticing that your blood is, your sugar, the amount of sugar in your blood is going down, you can start eating the fruits. Next one. This is a letter from our sister, White, from 1893. Wow. Look what she says there. Train the people to correct habits and healthful practices. Which practices? Everything that we saw. Fresh air, water, sleep. Remembering that an ounce of preventing is more value than a pound of cure. So when I said, I'm not sick, I don't need healthy, that was bad. We don't want weight to be sick. We might not recover from it. Sometimes it gets so advanced, our bad habits just keep on destroying our body. It gets so advanced that the natural treatment will help you. You will have benefits from it, but it's not, it's not going to cure. But God is so merciful that he will save you eternally. So many people that were very sick and they found God, like the true meaning 
of loving God that they could not be cured for this earth, but they will be called when Jesus comes. Lectures and studies in this line will prove of the highest value. So prevention. Let's try our best right now so we don't get sick. Uh, next. The Lord has taught us that great efficacy, eth, uh, how do you say that? Efficacy. My kids are my correctors. <laughs> they are not here. For a healing lies in a proper use of water. You remember that doctor that wrote the book that you are not sick, you are thirsty? These treatments should be given skillfully. We have been instructed that in our treatment of the sick, we should discard the use of drugs. If you use drugs, it's okay. It's fine. Just add the fruits and vegetables. And every time you go to your doctor to do your blood work, your doctor will say, hmm, um, this is too high. We need to put your medicine down. Uh, there's this girl that she has uh, hypothyroid problems. And uh, we know that hypothyroid, if you, try, if you take medicine, you take forever. So she started with more fruits, more veggies, and she said, I want to go gluten-free because I know that gluten, it really messes up my thyroid. So she went gluten-free and was like about five, six months of eating and doing more things. Um, she couldn't sleep. And uh, she called me and she said, I don't know what happened. I can't sleep. I, I used to be sleepy all day. She had hypothyroid. And uh, now I'm just awake. So much energy. And I said, oh, so it's time for you to go visit your doctor because the medicine is too high. So she went to the doctor and the doctor started but she's in the lowest, lowest dose now. And sometimes it gets so low that she, and she knows because she can't sleep when the medicine is too high, that she can skip a day. So she can day one, yeah, I take the other. So she can just adjust to her body to see when she needs it. Is that possible to happen? Yes, it is. You don't need to do it at once. You can baby steps slowly. Just add the fruits and vegetables, more water, everything that you learned today. And you start having the good blessings out of it. Um, there are simple herbs that can be used for the recovery of the sick, whose effect upon the system is very different from that of those drugs that poison the blood and endanger life. If we read side effects, we don't take anything. In medical school, we were taught to tell our patients, do not read side effects, because they would start to make that in, in themselves. Like, uh, okay, so it, it gives uh, a sweaty, just by the thought of I'm sweaty, they will start sweating. <laughs> but it happens that the side effects of the medicines, it happened. Remember, God's way of healing will add. Life will add healing. Whatever man created and invented will take and damage and cause death. God wants life, Satan wants to destroy. Next one. We need anyone to be ignorant of God's remedy. It's, it's hard to, to read that old English, right? So in other words, it's like, don't be ignorant of God's remedy. Hot water fomentations, and cold and hot compress. We will learn a lot about it tomorrow. We will see like the, the main herbs that 
are good to start storing, but the important to become familiar with the importance to become familiar with the benefit of dieting in case of the sick. So you know, you don't need to pay a clinic very expensive to starve and to just eat fruits and vegetables. You can do that at your house. You feel sick, stop eating, cook food, drink lots of water, eat your fruits and veggies. All should understand what to do for themselves. Do you know your body? We are called to know your body. If eating bananas make you feel bad, should you be eating bananas even though it's something good? No. Even says, honey is good for you, gives you energy. But the next book, it says, too much honey can make you nauseous. So we need to understand that you have moderation, even in the good things. It's a fruit, it's a vegetable, but if you are allergic to strawberries, are you going to eat strawberries? No. So we need to know our body. The cleaner you get your diet, the faster you will know your body. Sometimes you put something in your mouth and you know, ooh, this would be bad for me. You will know immediately. Next one. Take warm foot baths into which have been put the leaves from eucalyptus. So a good diet is number one. The eight remedies is number two of things that you need to have at home. How much costs all these? Very accessible, right? You can go to your neighbor and ask for it. They won't mind. It's not expensive. So eucalyptus tree, uh, here in, in Virginia, we do have, do you have eucalyptus trees here? No, right? No? Yes? Huh, you do have eucalyptus tree. <laughs> the oil of the eucalyptus is especially beneficial in case of cough and pain in the chest and lungs. So what she was recommended to do with people that had any, any problems, they would do the treatment to activate circulation. When you do the foot baths, what you're doing? Activating circulation. Because you do, they have two parts of water there, right? Can you see the two? One is hot water, the other one is cold water. And you are activating your blood circulation. And to add to that, to help, in the hot water, you can put eucalyptus leaves, because that will release the oil from the eucalyptus leaves, and your body, your skin, will absorb that better because it's hot water. And then you put in cold water, it will close, and we will activate circulation. Then you put in hot water, cold water, hot water, cold water. Can you see how your blood will start to circulate more? And the benefit from the eucalyptus oil will help you too. The vapors of the eucalyptus will help you to breathe better. And is it hard to do it? It's, it takes a little bit of work, a lot of, uh, maybe inside of the bathtub you can have two buckets and uh, that way you won't have like a big mess. But compared to whatever you have, whatever procedure you have to do at the hospital. This is not extreme at all. Some people that I talk to um, and, and they say, okay, let's do 80% raw. And they go, oh, that's extreme. <laughs> really? <laughs> Open heart surgery is extreme. <laughs> it's, it's extreme. You prefer to go through all the pain, all those meds, the risk, then eat more veggies and fruits. Sometimes we don't use our good senses. We, we can't see it, but Satan blinds us. And God can take that blindfold away. And then you can really see. So I'm not doing that. Um, but for one of uh, 
the ladies that came to talk to me, uh, she said that her doctor gave her uh, salt pills because um, uh, what was happening? Um, she wasn't drinking enough water, so for her body to maintain the proper amount of water, her doctor gave salt pills. How much sense that, and I said, and did you do it? And she said, yeah. And I said, uh, just think about it. I'm not gonna say anything, just think. What do you need instead of this salt pill? And she's like, water? Yes! <laughs> water. <laughs> A lot of things doesn't make much sense right now. When you go to the doctor to do a PET scan, it's like a, a, an image for cancer. And they put in one arm, they put sugar. In the other arm, it's radiation, a contrast. And then you go through a machine. When the cancer cells are eating the sugar that was injected, it releases heat. And then you go through the machine with the contrast. It takes pictures of that heat. The cancer cells are eating and being fed in sugar. And then you finish and you see the image where you have red yeah. is the cancer cells eating sugar. And then you go to your doctor and you say, okay, so I have cancer. What should I eat? And your doctor will say, whatever you want. <laughs> yeah. Can we eat whatever we want? Will bad things feed bad things? We want to kill the bad things with the starvation. Not kill us. A lot of things we really need to ask God to give us strength to fight for it, like, or fight against it. Like, you go to the doctor and he wants to push some kind of weird things that you know doesn't make any sense. And uh, sometimes I would just say, oh, okay, I take it. Or with a patient, I would say, okay, so if you take these and add these, you know, magnesium, or uh, something that you can buy at the drugstore. It will help you, and you eat a lot more fruits and veggies, and here is the pill. The patients go, I just want the pill. <laughs> the person is still blindfolded, and Satan does that to us. Just pray that the Lord will help you to really see and understand when it's a trap. Do you want to make a trial of this remedy, which is so simple and which costs nothing? Let's try. It's not extreme. Extreme is something else. Next one. What kind of medicines we need to have? So we learned that she w was revealed to, um, to the Lord's prophetess, was revealed that water, the eight remedies, knowing your body, doing um, fo uh, the fomentation and uh, the foot bath will help to promote um, oxygenation, circulation, alkalinization of the body. Now, the herbs, the herbs will help. But if you don't go to the root of the problem, if you don't start fixing your habits that guided you to have that problem, you are just putting a Band-Aid on it. You know, charcoal will work. But it doesn't mean that every time that you eat fried food and you drink charcoal, 
that will make you feel better. You just keep doing it. Now we have air fryers. <laughs> we don't need deep fry anything. So little changes, the Lord needs to take the blindfold that we, we need to ask, Lord, please help me with this because it's so much easier to take something for pain without understanding why I have back pain. Oh, I didn't drink water today. Could that be? Yes, could be. Your body will take water from where you have a lot to put somewhere else where it's needed and then the pain starts. Forehead pain, headache right here. Lack of water, yes, lack of water. The brain has a lot of water all around. And when we are thirsty, the brain, the, the, our body doesn't know where to take water from. It will take from where we have. And we have consequences. So try to find the root. Usually, we all know it. Yes. Uh, I just want to say, uh, so I have a daughter who's at the college. And uh, I give you a break to drink some water. <laughs> and uh, she grew up with me being a hippie with always giving natural remedies and stuff. And when she was a little girl, she'd have an ear infection. And I'd say, okay, come on. We're going to slice an onion. We're going to slap that onion on your ear. And she was like, mom, you're so weird. You're weird. Like the other, you know, other mothers aren't like this. And she, I put the hat on her and she'd sleep. She'd wake up in the morning. There's onion all over her bed. She stinks really bad. She's like, oh, it's gone. And then she gets sick, you know, she got the flu. I'd mix her up some charcoal. Even when she was little, she was drinking charcoal. And so she, oh, I'm better now. I'm ready to go. And all of a sudden now she's, you know, years and years of all this stuff and doing hot and cold treatments. You know, she get in the shower. Ah, mommy, why are you doing this? We're going to get rid of that flu. Ah, okay, we're going to turn on the warm. Ah, and now we're going to do cold. Ah, and she would say, my mom is so weird. But now she's at college, you know, and she called me up the other day and she said, mom, you're not going to believe it. She goes, I, I helped a girl. I'm helping everybody on the dormitory. So she's at SAU. How many people know Southern? Yeah. So she's at Southern and she says, mom, we had a real bad incident last night. I said, what happened? She goes, a girl came in. She goes, cramping. She said, oh pain. She says, I haven't gone to the toilet number two in like six days and I'm in pain. And she's sobbing and crying. She said, I got some prune juice and it didn't work. And then my, my daughter looked at her, she goes, you are a cheese eater. You are constantly eating cheese. This is making your intestines all backed up. It's like glue. She goes, all right, we need to get an enema. We got, and she said, enema, oh, you know, that's like the, and she goes, yep, we're going to put some herbs in there and this and that. And, and we're going to put some uh, treatment on your stomach with some charcoal paste. And, and my daughter had her all hooked up. And then she was like, and the other girls are like, you're going to do what to her? And, and you know, that girl was better like that. It does work if you work it, but like Dr. Avani is saying, you can't keep continuing in the habits. And now that girl doesn't eat all that cheese. She still has a little cheese now and then, but she learned a valuable lesson. These work. Next one. So I divided it through our system and what it's really good to have at home. What really works, amazing. Of course, with everything else, God works with everything. Not just the eucalyptus, not just the elderberry. We need to also start eating the foods that will help our immune system, that will fight infection and not give infection and put our immune system down. So we need to Use eucalyptus, elderberry syrup. Elderberry is amazing. It really, um, it puts our immune system very high. 
It has high amounts of nutrients and minerals and vitamins for our body because when we are sick, we have an imbalance of minerals and vitamins. When we eat the foods that are high in minerals and nutrients, that part is fixed. So our body can start the healing process. The cool mist humidifier, so the, in the humidifier, you can put their drops of peppermint oil or eucalyptus oil. Try to get pure essential oils. Uh, some of the essential oils are very contaminated with perfume. And uh, just try to find a brand that it's pure as possible. Or you can make your own. There's ways and videos that teaches you how to do it. You can make your own. Um, and umka. Who knows umka? It's a, a mixture of a lot of herbs with elderberry and sambuca and other tiny little berries that are still wild. They were not genetically modified yet. So what happens is that when you are sick and, and lacking of nutrients, we get very sick. And our body responds very fast to a nutrient called MSM. I know you know about MSM because when we have pain in our articulations, we can take MSM. It's a natural medicine and will help. That natural medicine is the equivalent of getting a fruit has the amount of antioxidants from when you pull a fruit from the tree and eat it right there. Yes. Wow. So you want to be healed? You grab right there and eat right there. Um, do you remember that way of planting? Um, he did a documentary. He, uh, this man, he lives in um, Washington State. And he did a documentary on how to plant uh, called Back to Eden. It's a way of gardening. And uh, he said something there that was really, really interesting. There was a, a man that had advanced cancer. And uh, he said, can I, can I just come here and, and learn with you? And, you know, I'm dying. And uh, the, the man that was the farmer, he said, you know, do you want to try something? Do you want to rent an apartment or a, a house or a room near here? And the only food you eat is from what you can pick from the ground or from and just eat here. Don't take it home. Just grab it, clean it. Don't even need to wash it because it has probiotics. Just clean it and eat. And he did it. What happened to his cancer? It was gone. So what is in there is a packed, condensed MSM that it's a free radical fighter will fight everything that is damaging our body, everything that's processed, that is acidic, that is damaging, the free, the cause free radicals. So when we eat from the tree right there, it has double amounts of healing. And when it travels, it still has a lot of nutrients and vitamins. It's still better. It, it lost a lot. If you juice and let sit for a whole day, it lost a lot, but it's still better than eating the French fries. It's still better than eat, eating something cooked. So it will lose a little bit. If you can't live grabbing your own food and eating it, it's okay. God will bless you. The little thing you want to do or the big thing you want to do, he will bless you. Next one. So what works for our ear? Ear infection. Colloidal silver. Have you guys heard of colloidal silver? It's silver. 
And uh, it is very potent. It's diluted, diluted down, and it kills a lot of bacteria, fungus. So it kills in this spot, virus. It kills in this spot. So the problem is in the throat. You will um, do some um, gargles. Yeah, you put a little bit in your mouth and you try to let that go in your throat and you spit it out. You can use internally, but it's better to just use in the outside of the skin. But if you want to take internally, you need to really follow the directions. Garlic oil drops. Oh, have you tried that for ear infection? My mom used to do this one. So you get olive oil in a spoon and you shred a little bit of garlic in there. The oil, the olive oil, will pull the oil of the garlic. And when you heat that, you just heat a little bit. It can be with a, with a little lighter. And you hit the spoon and that heat will pull extra oil from the garlic. And then you put there a, cotton, a, a tiny cotton ball and you get it a lot of that oil and you put it in the ear. Uh, see if it's cooled down first. <laughs> In the ear, you can put the cotton ball right there. And that oil will go all the way down and we will start to kill the virus, the bacteria, the fungus, whatever is there, it will start to kill right there. And the inflammation will start to go down and the person will start to feel better. If you don't have garlic, you can slice an onion and put it right there and rap like Tina did with Sierra. Um, uh, I was changing that. It's a sliced onion. And uh, I put the sliced and I forgot the onion, sorry. <laughs> Probiotics. Probiotics are very good because with time, we start taking antibiotics and the antibiotics stop working, then we need a stronger antibiotics. And then it goes into this cycle. And if at the end, all the good bacteria in our intestine dies. And we need the good bacteria because it's the good bacteria that kills the bad bacteria. And then we get into that cycle that all our good bacteria are gone. And then we eat something that has good bacteria and it repopulates and then we take antibiotics again and oh, it just when we start every three months we need to take it have you noticed that when it started with an ear infection you take antibiotics then it goes through a throat infection and then the next one is a bladder infection and then it goes to the ear infection again three four months it starts to happen that cycle and what happens to our good bacteria they die so we need to um, do the probiotics. Try to buy the plant-based probiotic because the ones that are in milk, a lot of people are allergic to milk, cow's milk, dairy milk, and they don't know and they start having inflammation and you're trying to fight inflammation and then you put more inflammation. It, it's not good. And go on a fruit fast. It's easy. So every time you go to the store, you get extra garlic. You can put it in the freezer. You can get extra onions. And to prevent getting sick, you put extra onions in your food. Um, probiotics, every time you see a good sale, you can get some probiotics. Or you can make your own um, yogurt with probiotics. Um, on YouTube, you find lots of recipes how to make soy yogurt with probiotics. It's very easy. And it turns, it's, it's not as consistent, but it, it has a lot of probiotics and it tastes like yogurt. Just the consistency is not much. Next one. First aid. If it's something happened, a bug bit you while you were working at the garden, you, you don't know what to do. Clay, get clay. 
If you don't have the fancy clay, the expensive clay, it's all right. You take about this much from the top soil, but on the side, about, uh, how much is that, um, a meter? So under that is safe to use. So you can grab that soil, mix with water, and you will have your own clay. And whatever you have an animal bite, you can put the clay there, and the clay will pull the poison or whatever is irritating your skin, it will pull it. If you mix with charcoal, wow, it's even better. It will pull even faster. If a person was bitten by a snake, it's a poisonous snake, and there's no way to get to the hospital, you just put yourself the, in, covered in clay and, uh, um, and charcoal. And that will pull your whole body, the whole body, just cover everything. And if you are on an, an accident situation where you were hiking and you fell and you hurt yourself or a poisonous animal bit you and there's no way that you can move and go for shelter or for help, cover yourself in clay. And all that will start to pull. Um, the, the poison. The animals, the wild animals, when they are bitten, but they are able to, um, to survive, they cover themselves in clay and they don't eat. They just drink the water, they try to stay near, they just drink the water and they are all covered in clay. Um, the other one that is really good is lavender oil. You can really clean the skin and uh, a, a lesion, an open wound with lavender oil. If you don't have the lavender oil, the pure one, you can grab the leaf of lavender. You can mash it on your hands. You put um, a cloth on top of your skin and the lavender mashed with your hands. Put it on top and wrap. Difficult? No, right? Um, frankincense oil and coconut oil. Um, my husband was having some skin cancer on his eyebrow. Story. Story. And she saw the whole thing. <laughs> and he was like, ah, I don't want to, to go and get this tested because then they would take a big part and a friend of mine just had that happen in his head and they took parts of the bone and now he has like that oh no i do something for me what can i do and oh lord ah uh, well i believe in it so i will be tested right and i said okay let, let, let's do the frankincense let's do frankincense one night copaiba oil next night, lavender, myrrh, all oils that are good for skin cancer. And during the night, so he would put the oil there, and during the night, I would cut um, aloe plant, tiny pieces of aloe plant, and I would put the inside part, you know, the, the one that is very slimy, put it there, and cover it, and he would spend all night with that there. One day, two days, three days, four days, one week, that thing start look ugly <laughs> and swollen and red. It was scary. And I said, do you want to go? And he said, no, because I know what happens. My whole eyebrow will be removed and destroyed and the bone and I will be deformed. I don't, I don't think I, I want that. Just keep doing. I said, okay, let's pray. <laughs> and we kept doing. One morning, it took about 15 days. I removed the aloe and it, it created like a scar, a 
thick piece of leather, like skin, dead skin. And I pulled the aloe plant, the whole thing came off. And it was beautiful with skin under there. He didn't lose any hair on his eyebrow. You can't even see it. Yeah, uh, we had an, another experience from uh, Chesapeake Church where the boy had um, a growth on his foot. His finger was growing with the growth. It was scary uh, in, in his toe, in his big toe. It was really scary looking. And um, um, his mom called and Tina and I said, well, let's, let's do the onion. And they started every night, put onion, shredded onion in the feet. Um, in a plastic bag with a sock. Ten onions. <clears throat> and uh, when he went for biopsy, when the doctor opened, the cancer fell. And he's like, oh, what happened? <sighs> so it, it, it works in miracle ways. And uh, this these boy, he asked to be baptized after that. So you know when something is from God, because it will happen a transformation there. And the person will not be the same again. It, it, it's beautiful. What else can we use? Arnica or Arnica. Um, Auchi is a bunch of more uh, concoction of more medicines, more natural medicines, pl plants. And there's one called Earth Mama, that it's a mixture of a lot of oils. You don't need to buy that. All that is expensive, but I want you to see that you have options. But if you have the lavender at home, if you have the frankincense, the bentonite clay that is in your backyard, that's it. Is this expensive? No, right? It's accessible. Frankincense can be really expensive, but you can buy the rocks, the frankincense rocks, and then you learn how to process that to use it. But yeah, it's possible. It's not that expensive. Next one. Stomach. So you ate too much. When the food start losing flavor, when it doesn't taste good anymore, it's because we are full. And sometimes we keep eating because it feels good. And then we have a tummy ache. <laughs> what can you do? You can do charcoal. You get um, a half of a teaspoon of charcoal and you put in a little bit of water and you mix really well and you drink it. You have any problems that, it, oh, something didn't agree with me. Or you have a fever or um, your mouth feels sour, or you have canker sores, you do the charcoal. And whatever poison you have circulating, the charcoal will trap and will be eliminated. Peppermint oil. Before you go to that, one, um, one important factor is if you're taking heart medicine or Go ahead yes, and tell them. Yes, the activated charcoal will interact with your medicine. So you want to do the charcoal three, four hours after taking the medicine. Or you take the charcoal, wait three to four hours, and then you can take your medicine. Because it will pull the effects of the medicine. But it will not pull the good effects of good food. So it's selective. Isn't that smart? It's a dead particle, but it, it, it knows to recognize what is poisonous for us and what is not. Ginger tea, peppermint oil. If you don't have the oil, but you have peppermint growing outside of your house, perfect. It will, um, it will make snakes go away. It will make mosquitoes, flies, rats go away because they don't like peppermint. The same with onions. If you're having a lot of snakes and rats and whatever problem, plant a lot of onions around your house and garlic and uh, um, peppermint. That, that will make those pests go away. 
uh, ginger, probiotics again, bentonite clay, dandelion greens. Sometimes we eat something and it didn't agree. You can go walk outside far where the animals will do their necessities. You can start grabbing the um, dandelion greens and eat. Uh, Craig knows the story about it, right, Craig? <laughs> yeah, it works. See, he ate something, didn't agree with him. So he went outside the church in Chesapeake, grabbed some dandelion greens and he chewed on it. About five minutes, about five minutes, the pain starts to go away. It's fresh. And why? First, it's picked right there from the ground. It's packed in nutrients and minerals and has a lot of chlorophyll that will calm down the stomach. Amazing. Next one. Uh, for cold and flu, we want to work on our immune system, but what can you have always handy to raise your immune system and to help your body to fight? Elderberry syrup, neti pot for the allergies. Have you seen that little um, bucket? It's a little thing with a handle and uh, you can wash your nose. So you put water here and water will come out through the other nostril. It really works because if you're having an allergy because of pollen outside, it's all stuck in here in your sinus and you wash it, it's not gonna cure you, but it will give a relief. Um, there, there is a doctor that said that if you start getting local honey and you take one spoon of local honey, it should be local from around where you live, one spoon every day, you will start to be immune to the pollen. So we work as a vaccine. Yes, it's true. It's a I'm sorry? I said a real vaccine. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, this, this is no side effect vaccine. <laughs> um, so you will create uh, an immunity towards the pollen. Vitamin C. Vitamin C, when we are starting to get sick, we take high doses of vitamin C. It might be that you are not gonna have the, the, the cold anymore. Sometimes when you catch it early enough, you can take care of it right there. Sometimes it just is there. Uh, echinacea, um, you can have the plant at home and every time you need, but only take when you need. Echinacea cannot be taken every day. Only when you feel you're getting sick, then you start. And you can take for about 10, 10 days. Then you need to stop and then take something else. Um, in our body, all the supplements and the herbs that we'll take as medicine, not as food, it will have an effect in our body. And it gets to the point that our body doesn't work with that anymore because it has so much. So everything, every supplement, everything we do, we need to give a break or change to another brand that has a little bit of different ingredients because our body gets used to it. And we need to stop and then start it again. About seven days stop, it's good. Oregano oil, oregano oil will kill all bacteria, virus, uh, fungus, it worked better and faster than antibiotics. So they would put the bacteria, the virus, whatever, in, in, in the laboratory and put drops of uh, the oregano oil, it would kill faster. It's just, it's strong, very strong. You, wanna, you don't want to do that straight in your mouth. You want to do that inside of a capsule. <laughs> and it, if you put it straight on your skin, it will burn. It's painful. So always dilute the, the oil or you buy it in capsules that will open in your intestines, not even in the stomach. It will open the intestine. Um, zinc for immune system. Garlic capsules, I like Allison 6000. Is um, Allison 6000, you can get it on a vitamin shop or online. And it's amazing. It works like an antibiotic. Only takes when you really need. 
And then you take like an antibiotic for 10 days, every four hours, or for 10 days, every six hours, that needs to be constant in your blood to kill the bacteria or virus. Oh yeah, the Alice in 6000, when Tina had her inflammation under her arm. Uh, air purifier. So if something is going on in your house that is making you sick, remember what they used to do in the Israelite camp when they would find mold? Remember? They would burn the whole thing. There was no saving for their tent with mold. It was burning. Oh, mold. So a couple of things are very bad, but if you have mold in your house, you don't burn your house down. You put Clorox. <laughs> Clorox will kill it. And you spray the Clorox, leave it there, and try to fix what is causing that mold to, to be there. And the, the smell of Clorox, yeah, we will smell, but it's better the smell of Clorox than the mold. Uh, the mold can make us sick, very sick. Uh, the fungus, it's very rare to find a medicine that will kill fungus when it's in our body. So we do want to take care of the mold. And when you think about it, but isn't cheese mold? Yes, it is. Concentrated mold. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just telling you. <laughs> yeah, it's a hard one. It's hard to chew. No pun intended. No, uh-uh. Bath salts or bentonite clay should take a detox bath. So can you, can you see a pattern of all the things that we are seeing here? Everything that we are doing when we get sick is to take in inflammation. What we are causing inflammation is everything that we put inside. So where is, is starting the inflammation? With our choices. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And then the inflammation we put in our stomach, in our intestine, and then all that can go through our whole body. So really, Lord, help us to eat the anti-inflammatory foods, yes. fruits and vegetables. What are the foods good for you? Fruits and vegetables. <laughs> what are the foods good for you? Fruits and vegetables. There you go. <laughs> Next one. Aches and pains. It's good to find out why we have the pain. I know you know. Don't you know? We know. Especially if it's a pain that is constantly there. We know it could be bad posture. Do we need to work on our posture? Yeah. It could be lack of water. It could be repetitive movement. It could be lack of exercise. It could be we are not sleeping the amount of time we need to sleep. It could be so many things. And usually we know. So even though we can use medicines for it, it's good if you find the reason. So Arnica cream is good. Baths. Muscle, um, the aloe for muscles and massage. There is a cream, aloe cream. Deep blue, it's a mixture of essential oils with this peppermint and spearmint that will activate circulation. Why are we having pain? Because our circulation is getting slow. And then the inflammation sets. Once we start putting things and doing things that will increase our circulation, the pain will start going away. Um, MSM and glucosamine. Remember the MSM? When we pick fruits from the source. Turmeric. Turmeric is considered a food. Everything there pretty much is considered a food. 
um, arnica. No, you can't drink arnica, but you can drink small amounts of clay. You can drink aloe. You can drink spearmint and peppermint. MSM, it's a concentration of nutrients. And turmeric. Can you see that everything there is a food too, is food grade? It's also a medicine for us, but they're all food grade. The turmeric, we need to do a really high dose to start seeing difference in the pain. It needs to be high. If you buy the, the capsules of turmeric and if it says take two a day, take four. It's a food, yeah, with foods. It doesn't harm your stomach. It's not, no. The, um, the, a lot of ginger, sometimes it will hurt, but the turmeric won't hurt. So you can make your orange juice or you can make your apple juice and you put a full tablespoon of turmeric there and then we work. Yeah. Um, for in the Gerson therapy treatment, they use like four or five tablespoons a day of turmeric. Yeah. Sometimes they juice it. Yes. It's really good. Yeah. Comfrey is really good. It's something that we can't use every day either. Yeah. You can use while you are sick or you are trying to prevent getting sick, but for the everyday use, no. Yes. You can get it in powder or you can get the root at the Asian store or at the Hispanic store. It looks like ginger, but it's a, a deeper color, it's yellow. For sore throat, um, we can buy tea or you can use your own tea that you have around the house. Usually for sore throat, drinking a lot of water will help. And uh, tea, like peppermint tea, um, anything that is warm and will go through your throat, cleaning your throat, it will be beneficial. Um, honey, lemon, propolis. Propolis is a product of the bees, when they are processing the honey, they also process the propolis that is a medicine for them. They give that to themselves while they are working to heal themselves. So propolis is very strong, it's very good. Um, garlic and rocket fuel. Rocket fuel, rocket fuel. It's a medicine, a concoction medicine that works amazingly. And it does make you feel like a rocket. <laughs> so you, you will put in the blender two cups of water, a whole onion, four cloves of garlic, juice of six lemon, the big ones a big chunk of ginger, fresh ginger, and half teaspoon of cayenne pepper. <laughs> and you blend that. And then you add two more cups of water. And then you put some honey. <laughs> and you put in, in cup, just a little bit. You don't need to do a lot in a cup, and you pray, <laughs> and you drink it. <laughs> it's amazing how it activates circulation. <laughs> flu bomb, yep. It, it's instant. The first sip, your skin will be red and burning because activates circulation. And we are sick because our circulation is low. It works. When, when I can't take it anymore, I'm like, oh, mom, can you please do rocket fuel for me? <laughs> 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 uh, 
and she will do it. But um, when we feel sick, we don't want to do things for ourselves, right? We just feel so sick that oh, I'm so helpless. But um, ask somebody, I'm, I'm sure any brother and sister here will be glad to prepare you some rocket fuel and see you drink it. <laughs> <laughs> Next one. <laughs> insomnia. What can we do first? Why are you having insomnia? Is it hormonal imbalance? Is it stress? What is causing you not to sleep at night? You can use essential oils, you can use lavender oil, you can use supplements like magnesium, it's called calm, magnesium and calcium, um, melatonin, magnesium lotion. You can use a lot of things to help you to sleep better, but try to find why. It's really important for you to find out why you can't sleep. Headaches. Again, try to find the cause of your headache. You can use peppermint oil in your forehead and in the back of your head. It will help a lot. But is it a headache caused by high blood pressure? Is it a, is it a headache caused by the lack of water? You can use the medicines to help. But why is having the headaches? Um, Growing up, I used to have horrible, horrible headaches. It was so debilitating that if I was driving, I had to stop and just stay there, quiet. And finally would end up with the stomach clearing it all out. And the headache would stop. And I start noticing that every time I would eat foods that had a lot of fat, was fried or buttery or oily, I would have that kind of pain. And my stomach would put out only what had a lot of fat. Isn't that weird? How sometimes we are sick and we know, ooh, I ate that, that didn't agree with me, and you throw up, you throw up just that. You chewed, and the food mixed all there, but it separates, and it puts out what cannot go in because we really harm your system. Our body uses the pain and the facts to show us that something is not well. It's our red light. We don't want to kill our red light. We want our body to tell us what we are doing. We want the pain. We want the inflammation. We want the fever. Of course, we don't want it, but we want it still to tell us that something is wrong. Because one day, if we keep on damaging the red light, the, the yellow light turns off and one morning or one day, one night, whatever, the red light comes and that's it. And I'm sure you know a lot of people that, that happen. Like the person is never sick and he smokes and eats all kinds of bad things. And one day you go, oh, the person is gone. What? So the yellow light stop working and just the red light comes. So we want is still our body to warn us. We, want the warnings. we do want the warnings. It means that your body is trying to protect you. Um, other things for headaches, so many things you can do, but try to find out why. Next one. <laughs> Huh, PMS, this is like another person takes over 
when women are going through their period and another person takes over when women are going through menopause. It's scary. It doesn't have to be. Lots of exercise, lots of water, sleeping, take control of your stress, your thoughts. It can be controlled. What can we use? Primrose oil, it will well help immensely for menopause too. Clary sage essential oil will help. Heating pad and an amazing fruit called melon. This is amazing. The melon will regenerate the uterus and ovarian. It's impressive. So the person that is having trouble can eat melon, let's say 7 a.m. So wakes up, drink water at 6, at 7, can blend melon without water, nothing else, just melon, and drink that very slowly, mixing with saliva. After two hours, because it's just fruit, and it's a single fruit, not a mixture of stuff, if it's a mixture of stuff, it takes a lot longer. But just that one fruit in two hours will be digested. And then the person can have breakfast. So if you have any problem with uterus, ovarian, fibrosis, you have um, polycystic ovarium, or can't get pregnant, or know somebody that can't get pregnant, do the melon. And of course, other things. Try to sleep. And next one. Now you can ask questions. I know it's a lot. It's a lot to take in and um, the main idea of the herbs for you to have and build up your cabinet is that you don't need to spend a lot of money with it. All things that are around you, God can use to save you. Um, the foods you have at home, the clay, the charcoal, and the water are the main things that I want to keep with you. Because it's easy to find. Sister White even did her, she made her own charcoal. Um, she used to get a specific tree, a birch tree, and she would burn it. And when you turn into ashes, she would put that mix with the clay. And a man was left at her house to die because there was nothing else to do. And she put clay and sprinkled charcoal on top. And by nighttime, the man opened the eyes. So, Miracles happen. God uses those miracles. He uses the clay, the charcoal. And those are simple things that every time you go out, you go to the dollar store, you, you grab stuff that you find there, like um, hydrogen peroxide, um, alcohol, rubbing alcohol, and um, witch hazel. Uh, what else? Band-aids. What else can you remember? Top of your head that it might be good to have it at home for an emergency. Heating pads, um, wrapping, gauze, cotton balls, things that, tweezers, scissors, things that will not spoil, that you can keep it in a box. You have an emergency, you have everything there. Tomorrow we will go deeper in the uses of a lot of things and you will be able to see a lot of um, the, the, the supplements and uh, different kinds of things that you can use and you'll be able to see it. And we will do a couple of recipes that is good for you to have it in your freezer ready for if you get bitten or if you get a, a, a bee sting, it, you can just go to freezer and put it right there and that we will start working. Yes. Ah, oh, scorpion bites. Here is the scorpion land, right? And the snakes. Ugh. So the, the charcoal with clay. Drink it and put it on. 
So to drink the clay, when you need to drink big amounts of it, like for a bite, you let the charcoal sit. And then you drink it. So for the stomach, you use a little bit, you can mix and drink it, that will calm. But when it's something major, like a snake bite or a scorpion bite or uh, the brown spider, ooh, the reclusive, ah, that's painful. You go to the hospital, there's not much they can do. So what can you do? You will learn that but just put a lot of charcoal and clay to drink the, the charcoal big amounts but let sit under and uh, you can cover the body with clay and charcoal like you can put charcoal in the tub and clay there too and and lay there you stay there and pray yes <laughs> any more questions i know i've been I kept you guys for a long time. Really good. Yeah. I had an experience one time with a wife who had cancer. And, um, and she was so filled with it. The only time she would have relief is that we covered her body from head to toe with clay. Wow. That's the only time she got relief. So the pain was so intense. Yeah. Oh, wow. Hmm. But it, it did help to relieve her pain. It, it, it does help a lot. It takes the inflammation from the body. I had, I had an experience with a, with a spider bite the other day, and it was really swollen, and it was so itchy and it's painful. I just put a charcoal focus in this and for two days, and the pain was gone, and uh, it's not there anymore. But the other day, two days ago, I was stung by a wasp. Oh, that's painful. And swollen. Yeah. The, the charcoal, if, if, if you don't have anything else, but you have water, charcoal, and clay, you can pretty much survive to anything. Anything. <laughs> um, any more questions? Well, if you go home and you remember more, more things that you want to ask about, I will be here tomorrow. <laughs> um, don't go nowhere. Uh, we're going to pray, but I just want to add to this that tomorrow is really, really, really good. I know what's coming tomorrow, and it's fascinating because if we are in the time of trouble and somebody in your family falls, they break an ankle and we don't have medical care, something happens, you need to know what to do. Electric wires, you find somebody on your land, something happens, you need to know what to do. Burns, I mean, it's great tomorrow. You don't want to miss it. Bring a friend. Let's go ahead oh, and pray us out. I forgot to tell you something. Um, I have two booklets that I send to your brother, Craig, and you can give your email if you want uh, the, the two booklets. One is like a devotional where you will start to read every morning and say, Lord, please help me throughout this day to do some changes. And the other one is with natural medicine, like what to take for, for your bones if you need bone strength. And it's free. But you do need to give your email to Brother Craig, his brother Craig. And uh, he will send it to your email. Usually, uh, we used to print all these when I was going to other churches. But it just gets so expensive. And um, it just ends up in a drawer somewhere. And we don't even open it. So we'll be on your email. We'll be saved there. You can put in a pen drive or not. Just we are trying to save paper. <laughs> Tomorrow's uh, program begins at 10. There'll be a light brunch, meet and greet, shake hands, say hi. So make sure you're here tomorrow at 10. After we eat, are we coming back here?
here then? No, no we are yes, going to be doing everything because we're going to do some hands on. No. We're going to need um, to bring your it, it was changed. It was changed. Clothes. It was changed. We, we will eat. They, they just changed it. Yeah. We'll eat, come here, use the slides. Oh. And for the part that it's hands on, we will go there. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry about that. It was just changed. <laughs> Free back rubs. <laughs> Let's pray. Dear God, thank you, Lord. Thank you for being so good to us and so faithful. Even when we go about our lives and we do everything wrong, you still heal us. I ask you, Lord, that you help us to do the necessary changes to be more like you and to help everybody around you how much more people we can um, tell them about our experience how you healed us help us lord that through our experiences through your light shining in us we can just help people around us and be like a fresh water to people around us. Help us, Lord. Heal us. And uh, help us to be a new creature. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.